Hi everyone, welcome back to Jay's Office Hours. This is Jay Wells, as usual, coming here to share writerly wisdom with you. Um, and a bit of an update this time. It's been a few weeks since my last episode because I was out of town graduating from my MFA program in writing popular fiction from Seton Hill University. Super exciting. Uh, I spent two and a half years working really hard to earn that degree, so it was so great to finally uh, get my hood. They hood you when you get your master's degree. And um, also working a little bit of a vacation after that, which was really fun and much needed. So now I'm back. Um, I've been working on a couple of new projects that are kind of secret because I haven't sold them anywhere yet. Um, but I guess it's good that my muse is forcing me to work on all these new projects. I guess as somebody said that now that I've opened up some extra bandwidth in my brain, now that I'm not in school anymore, suddenly I'm having all these new ideas, which is great because you guys will soon have new projects to read. Um, so today I'm going to do a couple of things. One, I thought I would talk about one of my series that isn't as well known, um, just in case you haven't heard of it. And then I'm also going to give you a lesson on how to improve your writing by avoiding something called filtering. And I'll tell you about that in a minute. Um, but first, the series that I wanted to talk about today is Meridian 6. Um, this is, as you can see, this is just a novella. I think this one is about 112 pages long. Um, and Meridian 6 is a uh, set in a kind of dystopian, post-apocalyptic world where vampires have enslaved the human race. And the main character's name is Meridian 6. And she was uh, held as kind of a blood slave to the powers that be in the vampire hierarchy for many years. And she finally escapes, um, only to find that um, she is taken by the human rebels who are trying to overthrow the vampires. And they are making her work with them uh, to overthrow the vampires. Um, so she thought she was going to be free, but she has to kind of pay a big price in order to get her freedom. So this is the first um, story in the series. Um, the second story is called Children of Ash. I don't have a print copy yet. I'm actually about to release Children of Ash in print uh, in the next couple of weeks. And that story is even longer. I mean, each one I'm writing is getting longer and longer. And I think eventually I'll write a novel set in the world because um, with each novella I'm putting out, the world is growing and new characters are coming in and I just can't help writing a long story um, about a character's life. So I think you'll like it. If you like Sabina Cain, uh, there's lots of action. There's a tough female main character. Um, vampires are the bad guys in this book, though. There's a really cool guy um, who is the leader of the rebels. His name is Saga, and he lives in an underground book silo. He basically gathered all the books he could find and created a vault for them. So he's also kind of the uh, keeper of the knowledge in this world. So it's kind of cool. It's a little bit different than other things I've written, but I think you should check it out. Um, I'll put links to these um, books in comments so you can click and buy if you're interested. But that's enough of the commercial. Um, I just mainly know that a lot of people are more familiar with my Sabina Kane and Kate Prospero series, and I thought you might like this too. So let's get down to what you're really here for, which is the writing advice. So when I started grad school, I had to start sitting in critique workshops, and I had never done that before, but it was really interesting. I learned a ton about my writing and other people's writing and how to talk about it in these workshops. And one of the ideas that kept coming up was this thing called filtering. Now, when you're writing um, in first or third person, um, <clears throat> there is a tendency when you're writing the narrative to say things like, I saw Tom walk into the room, or he felt the cold wind brush over his skin, or he heard a noise in the other room. Those he heard, he felt, uh, he saw, these are filtering phrases. And the problem with them is that when you're in a deep point of view, like first or third deep, um, when, ha when you add those filtering words in, you create distance in the narrative. Suddenly you're not, the character isn't seeing the story through your character's eyes, you're separating it and telling them what happened. 
And so a really great trick for making your, uh, your prose more immediate and to have a greater economy of words is to remove those filtering phrases. It's actually not that hard usually to reword a sentence to remove the filtering. Instead of saying, he saw Tom walk in the room, simply Tom walked in the room. Um, if he, instead of, she felt the cold breeze, a cold breeze brushed over her skin. Um, it's a small change that has a very big impact on your work. And you'll find the more you write and the more you learn the craft, there are a lot of tools that are that simple that create these wonderful net benefits in your work. Um, I think I've talked about backloading before, which is where you put the power word of your sentence at the end of the word, at the, the power word of your sentence at the end of the sentence, because the last word of a sentence is what people remember. And these little tweaks to your language um, create power, they create emotion, they can create uh, tension, they can create a faster or slower pace. And once you kind of master uh, the rhythms of storytelling, you learn how to plot, like these big picture items, characterization, the three-act structure, those types of things that you focus on first as a writer. Then you start adding these extra little tidbits to your bag. And so when you're going through and revising and really trying to tighten up your work and really focus on your wordsmithing a little bit more, you can use techniques like getting rid of your filtering and backloading to add a lot of power to your stories. It's a quick tip and an easy one, but I hope you'll try it today. Just get a piece, uh, you know, just get a page from the, the whatever story you're working on and look for these filtering phrases. He saw, he felt, um, he listened, he heard, um, really anything that's like filtering an experience through his senses. You want to make it more immediate. Tom walked in the room. The wind blew through the trees, um, you know, blood appeared on the wall, whatever. These are powerful ways of writing sentences. And if nothing else, we want our work to be powerful, right? I hope this was helpful. Um, if you have suggestions for a topic you'd like for me to tackle in a future Jay's Office Hours episode, drop it in comments. Um, be sure and check out my website if you're interested in learning more about my books, www.jwells.com. And while you're there, sign up for my newsletter for all sorts of updates about upcoming releases. Um, like I said, I'm about to release Children of Ash in print, and if you want to know when that comes out, the newsletter is the best way to do it. I also have uh, exclusive contests, I post excerpts, I post writing tips in my newsletter. We also have a couple of fun features. I post a recipe of my own every month, and I also share um, pictures and kind of a little story about my fans' pets. Um, I call it Fur Fan of the Month. So if you're a fan of dogs and cats and ferrets and all sorts of other wonderful furry creatures, uh, definitely sign up. I hope you uh, are having a good summer and I wish you happy writing. Thanks so much.